In version 3 of the game, we've added a game over and play again, and we've added a bunch of lives. And we can now hit the ball for the first time. And notice as, as we keep the ball going, it starts getting faster and faster. So let's have a look at how we've changed this. First of all, we'll look at animate. In animate, we've added a lives underscore MC movie clip. In there, there are five frames. First frame has got four balls on it, then three, then two, then one, then none. And we've added a little action to the first frame in a separate layer. And if we look at that action, it's just a very simple this dot stop. On layer info, here's the panel that um, contains the game over screen. So, why is it not displaying? Well, the answer is I've turned off the visibility. So, in the property panel, you can toggle the visibility. And you can toggle the visibility using your JavaScript as well. So, two new movie clips, one called info underscore MC which by default is hidden, and one called Lives MC, which has got five frames in it that we've seen, seen a moment ago. So let's have a look at the code. So we're in version three of the game, looking at game JS. In the init method, we save little property references to info underscore mc and lives mc just calling them this dot info and this dot lives other than that no change to the init method in the new game method we're toddling the visibility of our info making it the visible equals false so that'll hide it and we're sending our lives that's the thing that displays the four balls and a, and a blank. We're sending back that back to frame zero, the first frame. In the new ball method, whenever we have a new ball called, we increment the lives. So go to and stop this lives dot current frame. That's the frame it's currently on. Add one to it. So if it was on zero, then this dot lives dot current frame would equal zero. Add one to it. We go to and stop at frame one. We've got a new property called new ball speed, which is defined in the constructor as ten. And we've now got a method called adjust ball speed, and we'll look at that in a moment. In our move ball method, so. No change to our update method. Move ball and update score are called every frame. In our move ball method, we're now checking whether or not lives is currently on the frame four. If it's currently on frame four and the ball has got gone off screen at the bottom, then we've got to terminate the game. So we set active equal to false and we set info dot visible equal to true so our info panel that says game over and play again that's now visible i should point out that info has got an on click event so info on click function equals new game so when the whenever the info panel is, is clicked the new game method of the game is called so by making info visible we've now got an opportunity to click it and generate a new game method. Now the, here's the, the interesting one. So we create a point, so that's going to have an X and a Y value, and it uses the local to local. We're taking a point in the ball, which is at zero, so that's halfway across because the, the ball's centered on zero. Let me just start, show you. We'll go in here. So that point there in the ball 
is zero, zero in the coordinate space of the ball. And we're interested in this point here. So we, we want to be checking a point where it's zero in the, in the X and half the ball height in the Y. Zero in the X, half the ball height in the Y. And we want to find that in the bat's coordinate space. So we want to go from the coordinate space of the ball at zero ball size height divided by two and find where that is in the bat. We queried local to local from the ball using the ball's coordinates and convert it to whatever we set for this particular movie clip. So the movie clip that we're setting the coordinates for is where we call the local to local and the third parameter of this method is where we want these points to be converted to and the output of this will be a point that's got x and y values. So then we can use the hit test method of the bat because remember now we've converted these coordinates into bat coordinates and we're now finding out whether th those points are within our bat. If they are, then this will evaluate to true and we can flip the value of y because the, the bat has successfully hit the ball and we can change our value of the move x to be based on how far along the bat we are and we've just got a little scaling factor there of four. So if we hit it to the right hand side of the bat it's going to slide off to the right and if we hit it to the left hand side of the bat it's going to slide off to the left. And then we call our adjust ball speed method which we referred to earlier. So adjust ball speed is doing exactly what we saw before but we're also adding 2 to our speed. So every time we call adjust ball speed it's going to speed up the value of speed by 2. So it'll get faster and faster. Call in adjust ball speed will set the value for move x and move y to be moving the ball initially at 10, a distance of 10 per frame, and then 12, then 14, then 16, etc. So it speeds up every time we call it. And this is called at the very beginning of a new ball, but also every time the bat hits the ball. And that gives you, that gives you a working game. So we get in there, but not many bells and whistles. So in the next video, we're going to look at how we're going to enhance this by adding a cartoon character to replace our bat. See you in a minute. This video was from the course Create HTML5 Games using Adobe Animate. To get the full course at a great discount, pull down the description and follow the link.